Hi golfers, Rob Cheney here from Golf Tech Singapore. Welcome to another lesson and this time you find us outdoors where we're going to be discussing one of the most important aspects of the game that often gets overlooked, the short game. I'm going to share with you today some ideas around striking those chip and pitch shots more consistently for better results around the green. So despite teaching hundreds of full swing lessons a month in the centre at Golf Tech, we also get the opportunity to come outside and do short game lessons and on course lessons. And there's no doubt at all that by the time we get outside with players, you see a lot of similar problems and deficiencies in when it comes to short game. I think the number one mistake that golfers make uh, without question is or have, have the most variability with is their contact. That's how they strike the ball, uh, whether they hit the ball properly as they, as they intend to, or the, the common mistakes are hitting the ground before the ball, chunking the ball in front of them, or the opposite of that would be thinning or topping the ball across the green. So I'm going to dis discuss with you some of the ideas around improving your contact around the green, whether you're playing a short chip shot or a longer, more flighted pitch shot. So the stack and tilt system would describe the first fundamental as being control the low point. Uh, and really what that means is control the point on the ground where the club strikes the ground. And, and with a full shot off the fairway, you're really looking to strike the ground just after you've hit the ball. I've discussed that in multiple videos before about how to have the weight forward and how to hit slightly down to create good solid contact with your iron shots and your fairway shots. There's Mike hitting 17 shots with 17 divots in front of When it comes to short game, we still want to control the low point. That's very important. We want to control the ground contact and the club's contact with the ground. But it's not quite the same as it is with an iron. We're not trying to hit down as much. We're not trying to hit the ground so far after the ball. We're not trying to take a big divot when we play this shot. So really I want to talk to you about thinking very much about the location of the low point and where the club strikes the ground. I see a lot of similar issues with trying to play this shot, which I've discussed in a previous video as well. But today I'm really going to discuss what I want you to do. So the first thing I want you to do is stand square to your target or neutral. Um, oftentimes golfers are standing open and closed and trying all sorts of funky modifications with their setup, which aren't necessary. They're not necessary and they're not necessarily helping them. In fact, many times they can be making things worse. So stand square to the target with your feet and have the ball position very central. So very centered for a standard chip or pitch shot. If you're trying to do something extreme, hit the ball lower or higher, you can certainly change the ball position. But for a standard baseline shot, I'm gonna put the ball in the center. I'm gonna have the handle more or less above the ball. So the shaft is gonna have almost zero lean to it. Not gonna be leaning backwards. It's gonna be more or less vertical to very, very slightly forwards. And then the key thing here in terms of the swing is to keep your arms soft, keep your elbows soft against your torso and ensure that you're using rotation from the, the knees, the hips and the torso to move this club around your body. And you're just going to increase the amount that you move to increase how far the club travels to alter your distance. So if you're playing a short shot, you'd do a, a smaller movement where the club doesn't travel a huge distance. And if I wanted to hit this shot another 10 or 20 meters, I'd start to increase the amount that I move my knees, my hips, my torso. So I lengthen out the swing on both sides. And as I'm doing that, the absolute critical piece that you must pay attention to is where is the club hitting the ground? Okay, the, the club should be bouncing or brushing the grass where the ball is located. 
And the reason this method works so well for m the majority of golfers is because they keep their arms or the radius, if you like, of the swing more constant and then use the pivot of the body to move the club. That's in stark contrast to how a lot of golfers would start with their arms very straight, swing back and change the radius, whether that be through bending one or both arms or changing their wrist conditions too much. And then as they go back down towards the ball, in terms of straightening out these limbs again, they start firing the club towards the ground too aggressively. That can result in hitting the ground before the ball and chunking. And then when you get the odd chunk like that and you get scared of that shot, it's very easy then to pull up as you come through and flex your arms, which will be topping the ball across the green. So it's fair to say if we could eliminate the chunk shot and the thin shot, every single person's short game would improve. How are you going to practice this? Well, I've already told you that you need to have your arms in nice and close to you, nice and soft, and you're going to use the pivot of your body on the backswing and the follow through to move the club. On that point, I think it's very often the case that golfers are scared of moving a lot for this shot. It's a short shot, maybe 20 or 30 yards. They think to themselves, I do not want to hit this ball too far. And as a result, their body motion really freezes and it, le it lends itself towards them becoming much more reliant on their arms and wrists throughout the swing, which as I've already said, is gonna mess up the radius and ultimately mess up the contact. So I think it's important you recognize and pay attention here to how much I'm moving my body, rotating my knees, my hips, and my upper body, even for a shot, a shot that's relatively short. Embrace the fact that it isn't less or fewer moving parts, it's just the right moving parts moving an appropriate amount. And the number one drill that I like to use when helping people control the radius of their chipping is to work through swings with one arm. Right arm only being my, my preference for a right-handed golfer, where we would keep the right upper arm soft and close to our body, hold it with my left hand, and just use my pivot to brush the ground with the club. That's also a great way to hit shots. Once you develop a confidence that you're gonna hit the ground, you go ahead and hit some shots with that one arm only drill. Practicing that way will really encourage your club to bottom out in the right place. It will increase the likelihood of you making good contact from around the green. Build your confidence and then you can begin to become more uh, adaptable to different situations and, and start to manage and, and vary the distance that you hit the ball. But until such time as you have the contact under control, judging distance will always be a lottery. And once you've done some left arm only drills, you can do the same thing with the right arm only. So holding the upper arm against my chest with my right hand this time, so my, my left arm holding it against my chest with my right arm here on my right hand, and using the pivot on both sides of the swing to brush and bounce the club off the ground. Again, a really nice contact. Keeping my arm connected means that I can't let that radius get too short or too long, meaning the contact there is gonna be under control more often than not. Once you've done it with both individual hands, try and take that sensation of your upper arms being somewhat attached to your torso, the elbows just gently soft and in against your side, and then start to do that action with the pivot on both sides of the swing. So, standing closer to the ball, feet together, ball in the middle of my stance, shaft more or less upright. I'm aiming pretty straight in terms of my alignment with the arms, the club, and the body. Now I'm just gonna use the pivot, keeping my arms nice and soft. I'm gonna go back, through. Really nice shot. Just notice how much my chest and my torso is facing the target at the end of this swing. This is about a 20 to 30 meter shot. Um, but I'm still managing to rotate quite a long way on the follow through where my chest, my torso, my hands and the club are really matched up to each other.
That was really nice, came out much st even straighter that time. A little bit short, but again, all of those have been struck nicely. And if you're a, a golfer of any level really trying to get better, but particularly new golfers and those trying to improve around the green, the quality of your contact is going to be the number one variable at the moment in terms of your short game ability. Getting better and getting more consistent at hitting the ball properly from any situation around the green starts with having good low point control. Low point control is con controlling the radius of your swing and this means controlling how the back of that wedge, the sole and the bounce of that wedge interacts with the ground. So there's some ideas that hopefully are going to help your short game. As I already touched on at the beginning of today's video, this is an area that gets a lot of neglect in, in many ways from golfers, whether that be through lack of facilities to practice or just lack of desire to work on this part of the game. But actually in terms of scoring and, and improving your score, it can be a hugely beneficial part of your game to get better at. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it would help someone else, please feel free to share it on social media. If you have any questions about the video and you want to ask, please post them in the comments section down below. I do try and respond to all questions and comments. Uh, don't always do it straight away, but I do it as soon as I can. If you'd like to see some different short game content, let me know that too and I'll try and get around to shooting it. Final thing from me this week, guys, before I let you go, is to check out the playlist I've made on short game and putting. If, you need, if this area of your game needs more attention and more help, hopefully you'll find some content in there that's really relative and useful for you. If you're not already a subscriber, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're not already following me on my other social media platforms, please consider jumping over there and giving me a follow. Until next week, guys, take care. Look forward to seeing you soon for another video.